mad woman. Interview. You are, man. And you're, yeah. God, yeah. I mean, you, it, well, we'll talk about it. Absolutely. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, we have a legend on the show. He comes from plant-based royalty, and they've all been on the show so far, at least his mom, his dad, his sister. We're trying to get his other two brothers to come on. He really needs no introduction. He is Rip Esselstyn, and we're going to rip today, aren't we, Rip? I hope so. You and, I, you and I know no other way of doing it. <laughs> well, I'm so excited you're here. And you were scheduled a long time ago, but you had to cancel because of surgery. Do you want to talk about that? And are, are you okay now? <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I, uh, I did. I had to have uh, surgery on my ankle. I, for many of you that know or don't know, um, I'm an avid uh, athlete. I did triathlons for a long, long time. And I love getting out. I mean, Austin has become so ridiculously crowded, the roads that um, I've taken to mountain biking. And I love getting out in nature, going on these trails where you have to be completely dialed in mentally. And I've been biking these trails behind my house for over 30 years now, AJ. And I just hit this one ledge and I hit a rock on the way down and there had been some rain the night before. So it was very slippery. And so my tire went out from under me, my right foot, I unclipped it from the pedal, but it got snapped Ugh. just the wrong way between the rock and the bike. And I torqued the dickens out of it and snapped my lower fibula near the ankle and had to be carried out uh, and uh, went in and had to have surgery. Ultimately, um, I had a plate, eight pins, and it was <laughs> it's, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. And I was I was I was either on crutches or on a little you know a little cart that you put your leg in uh, on. I think I've seen you in one of those, AJ. <laughs> yeah, the- but but I was on that thing off my leg for almost four months. So how did, you know, I'm just curious, because did that, I mean, some people like that would completely derail their health. Like they'd go you uh, know, not being able to exercise. They eat a bunch of crap and gain weight. How did you deal with, especially you're so active. How did you deal with four months of it, four weeks of inactivity? Well, I was going bananas. And so uh, after, so I had to have, you know, had an incision because of the surgery. And the doctor told me, don't, I don't want you swimming until that incision is completely healed up. Otherwise it can get infected. And we don't want that. So I went on Amazon and I bought this rubber leg, you know, like a sleeve that you can put on your leg. And then you basically, it's like a vacuum. You can suck all the air out of it and it sucks down onto your leg. It was the damnedest looking contraption, but I bought that. And so four days after the surgery, I was swimming without the doctor knowing about it. And, and every day I would do between 50 and hundred pull-ups. Um, I was not going to let my body atrophy and go to hell. And of course, you know, I continue to eat great. Um, so yeah, but so I was down for four days. And then after that, I was swimming every day, doing pull-ups, um, push-ups, whatever I could, whatever I could do. So many people would just use that as a reason. I know I would probably, but you, it's like, it's like almost like being active is in your DNA. I mean, you're the son of an Olympic athlete and who also, by the way, had a bike accident that required surgery. Well, he did. He did. He had a different kind of bike accident. Uh, yeah. Where he hit a branch on a road bike and went down hard and, oh man, broken collarbone, ribs, uh, concussion. Yeah. Not pretty. You can't keep the Esselstyns down though. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. We'll, we'll, we'll keep getting back up, hopefully. Well, you're looking good. So I'm so glad that you're feeling better. And you've been up to a lot of great things since I've last seen you. Podcasts, products. And because people keep saying, where do we get the Engine 2 products? So tell them because they're available now. I know. I know. Well, it's interesting. So, you know, uh, I had this licensing agreement with Whole Foods for a decade. Uh, and that decade uh, ended. Um just like a couple months ago, right? January of, of going into 2021. And so the Engine 2 products are really no longer, right? They've been discontinued from Whole Foods. So they've turned the product line back over to me. And so I'm pivoting and I am now turning everything Engine 2 to plant strong. And we're upgrading everything. We're, 
we're keeping the same nutritional kind of rigors, but we're also upgrading the, the flavor profile and everything. Uh, we'll be going into retail stores, starting with Whole Foods in August of 2021, uh, and it, with a very strict um, surgical focused um, strategy at soups, broths, chilies, and, and, uh, and broth, broth, soups, chilies, and stews. And then we have an online store where we still have some of the Heritage Engine 2 products, the, the big bowl cereals, the granolas, the pizza crusts that, that people just would, you know, were crawling through glass to get. And so you can order those now. Those are still available. And we'll be upgrading all those in the next two or three months. Their granolas are going to be insane. The big bowl cereal, we're going to organic oats. We're going to be adding dates, which you love. <laughs> I love dates. Love it. I love it. What's, your, what's always been your best seller? Uh, believe it or not, our best seller has been the no salt added veggie stock. How crazy is that? That one single skew. I'll, I'll show it to you. This right here, this one skew right here was the best seller. Yeah. That's because I've seen people use it. I've even seen Chef Darshana use it on, on her uh, cooking demos. So yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really great uh, veggie broth, but we're going to be, we're going to be uh, adding a whole bunch of other broths to the line here. And then um, the big bowl cereals are just always a, a home run. They're the bread and butter of the, of the line. And then the pizza crusts that, you know, are so clean. How, what do they have? Four or five ingredients no added oils. We do have a little itsy bitsy bit of maple syrup in those, but uh, that's about it. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but, I, but I need to tell you, Chef AJ, that this has been one of the hardest years of my life. Um, you know, we all kind of are put to the test. And obviously we've had COVID that we've all been dealing with. I had the broken ankle, but I also, um, you know, I left the nest of Whole Foods after uh, 10 years, which was an amazing 10 years as an ambassador, um, promoting the, the whole food plant-based lifestyle, uh, doing the food line with Whole Foods. And then, you know, after 10 years, that was up. It was time for me to move on. And I'm like, wow. And that's when I decided to tackle this, this food business. And it is hard. Food is hard. If you're trying to like put out products and get them into re, you know grocery retailers and do e-commerce. I can't even tell you how hard it's been and how much money it's taken. But I tell you, I think I'm there, but it, it, it's taken quite a team, uh, all the resources, the ingenuity, the entrepreneurship, the thinking outside the, you know, the proverbial box. It has been absolutely brutal, but um, I think it's going to be well worth it. Nothing hard. I mean, nothing easy. Nothing well worth it comes easy. And this has not been easy. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a great. Well, we have the links on the show notes for all the places you can buy it. But you, you have something coming up for Valentine's Day, which I think is around your birthday, isn't it? <laughs> How did you know my birthday? I don't know. I want to say it's like, I just think it's around Valentine's. I just, I seem to remember that you're around Valentine's Day. I don't know why. It is. It's February 16th. Okay. Yeah. 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 So have you ever heard of the chef's garden? I haven't. Tell us about it. So, so the chef's garden, it is, um, they grow some of the most amazing produce on the planet. It's, they do it through regenerative agriculture. Um, it was founded in 1956. And these two amazing brothers have taken over the business from their father who passed away about a year and a half ago. Um, but they grow all kinds of microgreens, green leafies, potatoes, you know, carrots, parsnips, you name it. I mean, literally this, it, it is the most probably premium uh, produce on the planet. They service Walt Disney, all the five-star Michelin restaurants around the globe. And um, they reached out to us because about 80% of their business basically dried up because of COVID and the fact that people aren't eating out at restaurants. And so I flew down there um, we had, I, I did a podcast with Bob and Lee, the, the two brothers that run the, the, the place. And I was just so blown away with them. And they also have a place on the grounds called the Vegetable Culinary Institute. And they have an amazing chef there named, named Chef Jamie um, Sampson. And we just decided to put together this 
plant strong extravaganza mystery Valentine's dinner for two. Um, and I'm going to share with you and your audience right now what it is, because you might be able to chime in since you're such the chef. So for, for our, it's a four course. The first course is a caramelized parsnip soup. I have, mm-hmm. have you ever had a parsnip soup? I haven't, but the fact that you said caramelized, you had me right there. Anything caramelized <laughs> yeah, is going to yeah, be more delicious. Yeah, had me at caramelized. I know. And it, and I mean, there's not one drop of oil, right, in, in any of these these dishes. You blacken the, you know, black and caramelize the parsnips. You throw it in the, uh, throw it in some, you chop it up, throw it in some water, and then you throw it in the Vitamix blender with some almond milk. Anyway, it's it's insane. And then, so that's the, the soup. Then the, the salad is just, it's, they have the most amazing mixed greens. So you mix these greens and then we put on three different types of poached beets. So we have your typical, you know, we got your, your red ace beets, you got candy stripe beets and golden beets, and then a three, two, one dressing. <clears throat> the main course is a, uh, a roasted carrot potato leek roast, right? With braised kale. And then dessert is a sweet potato mazamora. <laughs> I don't know what a mazamora is, but the whole menu like sounds a, incredible. It's like a, it's like does, a, this, does this come delivered already as is? Can you yeah. live anywhere or do you make it yourself and they no, give you no. the components? It, no, it comes with all the components because part of it is we want people to make it at home. And then it comes with a video, right? You do have access to a video that shows you step by step how to make this with me and, and chef uh, Jamie in the kitchen doing it. But you get recipe cards with everything. You get every ingredient you need. Um, and you get to do it for your loved one. That sounds like a fun thing. It'd be even fun to cook with your significant, it significant would. other. It would. It would. I mean, I think, I think you're right. It's, the best way to do it is if you can get your, your Valentine to jump in and do it with you. Get in the kitchen. So many people are saying how great it is to see you. And th- there is a question, will there, will the, will your products be available anywhere other than Whole Foods? Yes. They, Cause some people don't live near a Whole Foods or have one in their community. Yep. Starting in January of 2022, they will be um, available just about at as many natural grocers as we can get into uh, in a way that is responsible and is monitoring the cash flow of the company, <laughs> right? So, so that yes, but we'll be going into you know the Wegmans and hopefully the Publixes and uh, the Sprouts of the world as well. Um, but I, again, I want your audience to know that almost if they want the widest assortment and variety, just go to Plant Strong Foods and it's direct, it's shipped direct to your door. That's great because a lot of people are saying that they miss the product, so they're happy that you're doing them again and that you're doing well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if this is, I should have asked you before because I'm, if I'm asking a question that you're not comfortable talking about, but you know, I love your parents and your whole family, but your dad is so dear. And when people criticize him for whatever reason, it gets me really upset. And I, 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 I just can't do anything about it. Like when, or, you know, or any of the doctors that have paved the way. Yeah, I, I don't want to get real specific, but you know, some of the younger doctors, like they know better. They haven't done the research like your dad. And it just gets me so angry when anybody criticizes your dad and I'm not related. <laughs> I know, I know. It, uh, it, it definitely steams my clams too, for sure, right? Um, but I have found that... Um, it doesn't, it doesn't do me much good to get all, you know, bent out of shape and then, you know, go on a, a rant and a rage. Uh, I, I tend to stay low as opposed to firing back. Um, and that's, you know, my father, as you know, is, uh, is very, he's such a gentleman, right? He has uh, so uh, much class that he always yeah. goes high while everybody yeah. else is going low. He goes yeah. high. Yeah. He always goes high and, you know, he's like, let them throw all the barbs they want, you know, have they done the 34 years of research? Do they know what happens when you start introducing olive oil into the diets of people that have had these shots across the bow with heart disease, right? And it's amazing how with these people that have had, you know, 30 different stents, have had several heart attacks, have had angioplasty, they cannot get close to the fire without getting burned. Um, and he has had them. Okay, go ahead. Start introducing some olive oil back into your diet, right? And literally within two weeks, the angina returns. Um, 
as a firefighter, I can tell you, it's like hot spots. After you put out a fire, you got all these hot spots that are all over the place. And it's amazing how if you don't put out every single one of those hot spots, that fire will reignite. And these people have hot spots uh, that just, you know, because they've so abused their their um, their arteries and their vessels for decades and decades, they don't have the luxury of um, that some some of us do with you know not being perfect. Well, also you know I'm, it, the screen behind me is because I'm in the middle of hosting a, a, a Truth About Weight Loss Summit, and even if it didn't harm the vasculature, yeah. We have an obesity epidemic. And so I don't understand how telling patients to eat olive oil in any way, shape or form is going to help with that. Well, I know. Well, there's there's certain people that are really clinging to the olive oil and that it's got beneficial substances in it. And I'm sure that it does have trace amounts of right vitamin E uh, and some other things. But as you and I <laughs> know so well, AJ, since we've been in the uh, in the fray here for... God, you've been in it for uh, 30, 40 years. I've been in it for almost 30 years that olive oil, it's, it, it epitomizes uh, just, you know, empty calories and it doesn't have a shred of really anything that's beneficial, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's what I love about you. Cause you're just, you're not just plant. I mean, you're plant strong, but you know, you kind of are plant perfect. You really are. Well, I'm not, I'm not as plant perfect as some of my dad's patients. So, you know, I do tofu, I do tempeh, I'll do seitan with my kids. Right. Um, I, um, I do avocado. I do, I do walnuts, obviously. I, you know, occasionally I'll do some um, ground uh, cashews on some of my casseroles or you know, to make a creamy dressing. I'll do the cashews. Um, so but, you know. but you're not eating them because you feel you'll have some deficiency if you won't eat them because you like no, them. No, no. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, that, that's what I love about the Essels. They're the, they're the best. You know, I, 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 need, I need you to know something because I haven't seen you in probably, has it been like three years? I, I think it's been because I moved, I moved out of LA two years ago. So it has to be at least three years. Yeah. yeah you moved into that fantastic house of yours. I know. I'm, I'm so happy because I lived in an apartment my whole life. I mean, I'm like 60. I need to live in a house before I die. <laughs> You deserve it, man. Uh, everything you've done, all the books and everything, man, bring it on. But I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling passion. And, and do you know what my father said, Pat says passion is, do you know? No. What does he say? <laughs> passion, AJ, it's a feeling you feel when you feel you're about to feel a feeling you've never felt before. And it's happening right now. Nice. <laughs> do you remember the first time you came over for dinner with your mom and she ate so much that she had to lie down on the floor? <laughs> of course. But that's because, you know, you know, you know exactly how to um, appeal to the Esselstyns. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so <laughs> you fun. Had, that was you had like seven different dishes. You know, we were trying this. We were trying that. We were trying this. And then you had some just the, mo the most insane desserts because that's when you were really into desserts. That's when I was really fat, too. So not so much anymore. Uh, but yeah, it was just such a lovely evening. It was so your mom just cracks me up. And remember another walk down memory lane, you and your dad were speaking, it was Father's Day in the early 2000s. And you were, oh my God, excuse me for interrupting, but this is the largest super chat donation I have ever had. You have brought me so much luck. Thank you, Vernon Jefferson. Oh my God. I'm so appreciative. See, Rick, you brought me the best luck. This is the biggest donation. I, I, I do this show for free. I don't ask for donations, but apparently there's this button on YouTube that people You're can right. So thank you, Rip. Uh, so, so we were speaking at a, like an outdoor event, you and your dad, and your mom had slipped on a piece of fruit and broke her hip. And but we didn't know it was broken at the it time. Was but the kiwi. It was a kiwi. Yeah, see, that's why kiwis, <laughs> that's funny. I mean, there was the Vegan World Festival out in L.A., yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was so it was so awful. But what, but what was interesting about it? Not the fact that she broke her hip, but when she was on the on the gurney, because you were you and your dad were still trying to continue your lecture because she wanted you, and she was just just like just like a mother, just like bragging about you. You know, my son's a you know. She was just talking about you. But the 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 coolest part, because I was there with her, like they were saying, "How old are you?" And I think at the time maybe she was seventy five or seventy seven. Are, are, do you have any medical conditions? No. Are you on any medications? No. I mean, how many? 70 year olds can say that right yeah yeah i mean no <laughs> neither ann or essie are on any medications and they're you know 85 and 87 respectively but they 
I always tell people they epitomize what your 80s can look like if you embrace this lifestyle, right? If you're eating this way, if you're consistently, uh, really on a daily basis, engaging in some sort of exercise, weight bearing um, movements, uh, we can all have it. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not just to the you know select few. You know, I had Nelson Campbell on the show the other day and I had this idea because I'm, I'm starting to do theme shows and I thought, wouldn't yeah. it be great to have the Esselstons and the Campbells on the same show and kind of do like a family feud game between them and see who would win, like plant-based trivia. <laughs> well, you are the trivia master. Yeah. So I, I, that, I think that would be really fun. So, yeah. So, you know, you started a podcast. Tell us about that. Do you enjoy doing it? I do. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, as you know, right? Um, but, uh, it's called the plant strong podcast. I'm in my third season. Now I have desperately wanted you on, and we've come this close to making it happen. Um, especially before COVID when I only would do it in person. Um, but now that, you know, I'm doing them and the, the guest doesn't have to be in person. I know I'll be able to get you. So that'll be fun. Absolutely. That'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and season, and so I've had, and every season has had a different theme. Season one was around a New York City firefighter named Joe Inga, who was overweight, pre-diabetic, was in jeopardy of losing his job and reached out just in a, in an email to me saying, Hey, you know, can you help me out? I've, I really need to need to make this lifestyle stick. And so every guest that I had on was basically to help Joe Inga. So whether it was my father, whether it was the Shurzais, you name it. And it was a lot of fun. Season two was more of the um, kind of the trailblazers in the movement. This season, season three, is kind of I'm having people and we're talking about their Galileo moment. When, when they actually looked through that telescope and saw the truth about plant-based nutrition. Um, and I just, I've just got this season three uh, kind of going right now. A couple of weeks ago, I had um, Dr. Christy Funk, who wrote, uh, you know, Breast, the Owner's Manual. Have you had her on your show? I had her on, and she's coming on again in April to promote uh, some kind of summit she's doing. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, wow. I mean, you know, Angelina Jolie and and Cheryl Crow's, you know, uh, surgeon. Um, yeah, and she's 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 something else. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, I'm, I, I've got an episode. It's it's with. Um, the Barretts and these, they used to be poultry farmers and now they're turning all their poultry farm into a mushroom farm, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but, 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 but the, it's, it's funny. I mean, as you know, AJ, it's a whole nother um, art form uh, is listening and asking questions. And I've probably done a hundred now of these and um you just kind of, I, I, it's so interesting and we could talk about this, but you know, I've, when, when it was, when I was just starting out, I would have like every question written down. Right. And then I realized that I just, I wasn't present. I wasn't in the moment and it wasn't as natural. And so I really feel like I've grown as an interviewer and I just have like two or three like top line questions. And then I try to just dive in and keep it as natural and free flowing as possible. And I find that's usually when the magic happens. Yeah, well, listening is an art form. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I don't know if you remember, you know, Chevy Chase tried doing his own talk show and it bombed. He just, he didn't know how to listen. He didn't know how to like, you know, move aside and, uh, and, and not be the star of the show, right? I mean, our job, our job really is to just kind of ask really great questions and let the person, our guest, shine and radiate out. That's how I feel. I think when you can't see the guests, it's harder. So even though you're not doing it in person, are you visually looking at the guest when you're interviewing them? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah. it's really hard. Cause otherwise you excuse me, like I just interrupted you. If you don't see them, sometimes you don't know when the break is and when to talk. Yeah. No, I I'm trying to think I've done a couple where it's audio only and I haven't been able to see them, but not very many when I've been on their show, but when, when it's, when they're on the plant strong podcast, we're always looking at each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's, somebody, too many, there's too many cues that you pick up, right? When you're looking at somebody and just their body language and what's going on with their eyes. Yeah. Uh, Di says, would you consider making your food products organic? She'd be willing to pay more. 
fantastic question. And all of the new stuff that's going into retail stores and will, and that will be available online is going to be organic. Everything. Now, I will tell you that there's going to be a couple things like the cereals and the granolas that we just can't, we, right now, we just can't get it organic. But my, my goal is to evolve everything uh, to be organic. Uh, but for starting out, pricing and all these other things that you have to take into the equation, um, it just didn't make sense in some of these products. But it's a goal, absolutely. Right. I, I, obviously, with COVID, you can't be doing your in-person events. So you've taken a lot of them online, haven't you? And maybe you expect to do them by next year again in person? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, <clears throat> um, we all of our medical immersions, AJ, our annual plant stock event, all these things uh, basically just got scrapped because of COVID. And so we had to pivot and pivot hard. And so we did three virtual events. In 2020, we did a, a spring plant strong primer event that was very well attended. We had our annual plant stock event um, that uh, that we ran from the family farm uh, in upstate New York. That was an absolute blast. And then we had a kitchen rescue event that we that we did in Cleveland. It was basically just the Esselstyn family. Um, and then this year, we're planning on doing many more of these kind of um, special meals uh, that we're doing in partnership with the chef's garden, starting out with the Valentine's. We'll still do our annual plant stock event. And then we're planning if, you know, if it happens on doing our seven day in-person medical immersion program in Sedona, Arizona in October. And then we're also planning on doing some events with some of Whole Foods um, sickest team members in September uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, so yes, we'll be doing some events. That's great. I know the answer to this, Mandy asked if you're still a firefighter. I know you're not, but are you still in touch with the guys from Engine 2? Oh man. So yes, I am not a firefighter. I've been retired since 2000, September 25th, 2009. Um, so gosh, AJ, I think it's been almost 11 years. Crazy. But I actually was just on a phone call with uh, with one of my the guys from Station Two, Derek Zorneman, um, Matt Moore. I haven't spoken with Jr. Uh, probably in about three years, but I know he's a captain uh, at uh, at one of the hazmat stations here in Austin. Um, another guy, Scotty Walters, who was there, has since retired. He finished out his career in prevention. Um, Another guy, Josh Miller, retired, and he's now uh, going to school for um, archaeology somewhere. But yeah, I stay, I stay in touch with them as much as I possibly can. That's great. Maybe you'll have a reunion. Maybe we bring them all on and see see what they're up to. Seriously, I'd love to see let see them all and see how you've changed and influenced their life. I I love the way your mind works. Yeah, I just don't, well, I just want to put on good shows for people. And I, I do, you know, I say introducing you to people doing great things in the world. And that's, I mean, they don't all necessarily have to be plant-based, but we prefer if they are. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe you could do like, it would be so cool if you went into some fire stations and you went in with your diet for one of them. And then somebody else went in with something like really stupid, like keto, and then actually like put them against each other in like fitness competitions and, and blood pressure and things like that. And we know who'd win. That would be great. I mean, you're right. Do a whole lipid panel, blood pressures, uh, see who sucks down the oxygen out of the, uh, the air tank the soonest. Yeah, that would yeah. be so fun. Yeah. Firefighters are competitive. Yeah, and so are Esselstyn's. <laughs> With Misty. Uh, yes. are, 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 do you consider yourself competitive? Uh, yes, but not as much as you. But yes. Uh, yeah, think, a little think, bit. Because I've been on a lot of game shows. I do like playing games and words with friends. And so I am. But yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah, I think it's I think it's partly genetic. Dr. Lau would say how competitive we are, maybe. Misty says, Miss Rip, I miss your big bowl cereal cereal with the banana chips and nuts. Will you be bringing that flavor back? You know, that uh, that was my favorite as well. Uh, unfortunately, it was the um, it sold <laughs> it sold the least of all three SKUs. So, you know, we've got the original that's got the raisins. We had the triple berry. It's got the blackberries, the uh, raspberries and strawberries. And we had the banana walnut. And the banana walnut was selling like a third of what 
the other two were. So Whole Foods discontinued it. It doesn't mean that I can't bring it back um, under the Plant Strong name. And I'm glad you said that because I, I will look into it. But for starters, in in April, we'll be coming out with the uh, the date raisin and the uh, and the triple berry. Nice. Well, Stephanie wants to know of the products that you currently have, which are your favorites and what do you eat in general? I'm guessing you eat a big bowl every morning. Yeah. So, uh, well, this morning I had the big bowl with, so what I do is I take this frozen bag of, of berries. It's, it's got blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. And I pour like maybe a cup into the bottom of a bowl, throw it in the microwave for 45 seconds, take it out. And then I pour a probably a cup and a half of Rip's Big Bowl cereal on top of the frozen berries. Then I'll slice a banana. Then I'll put on a small handful of walnuts. And then I'll put in usually some ground flaxseed meal, some chia seeds. And then I do my plant-based milk. I usually do almond milk. And then I mix it up really, really well. I let it sit for about two minutes. And then I dive in. So that's what I had today. For lunch today, I'm having leftovers. And uh, my wife made a lentil oat loaf last night that everybody in our family loves. The kids love it. I love it. And so I'm having that with some Mike uh, with some um, broccoli sprouts. Have you had Doug Evans on your show? He's he's booked. I haven't met him yet, but he's definitely booked. So so I, he just wrote a book called The Sprout Book. And so because of Doug, I got inspired to grow some um, some some broccoli sprouts, you know. Have you heard, AJ, about just the magic that's happening in broccoli sprouts with the sulforaphane? Well, I will. Dr. Will B, I believe, talked about it, right? Well, I've had Dr. Will B on my podcast, but I can't remember him talking about it. But basically, in, in broccoli, but 150 to 100-fold in broccoli sprouts, you have these substances. They're called glucophoranin and myrosinase. And when you chew, those two basically come together and ignite to form sulforaphane. And, you know, sulforaphane is supposed to be this magic anti-cancer, antimicrobial, antiviral, you know, substance that we all need. And uh, so I just got inspired after, you know, and Doug, as you're going to see, AJ, is as passionate as you can get about about a topic as they come. Um, But anyway, so... I got this uh, lentil oat loaf from last night's dinner with some broccoli sprouts. Um, and then I also have some pita bread that I'm going to put all that into. Um, and that'll be wait, my lunch. Wait, that'll- did you? I did, did I hear any greens for that day? Yeah, the, the broccoli sprouts. Oh, just the broccoli sprouts. Okay, no okay. kale. No kale. Because you have a lot of sh- I still have my kale shirt from Engine 2, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. love. No, and then, and then last night we, I made a big, big kale salad. And I got leftover kale, kale salad as well. I, you know, I try and eat three to six servings of green leafies a day. Um, and then dinner tonight, my wife is going to make bubbles and mash. It's in one of our, in one of our books. It's basically potato pancakes. So we'll have that. We'll have some of the leftover salad. Oh, you know what I've been doing lately, AJ, that I am a huge fan of is I take frozen broccoli, like in the bags. I get a two pounds of frozen broccoli of uh, florets. I'll pour it into a hot skillet, not like high, high, hot, but medium, high, hot. And then I just blacken it and I put the cover on top. Then I'll put on some different spices and I let it brown and blacken, um, caramelize, so to speak. And then the kids just can't get enough of it. And it's so simple. It's It's simple. It's cheap. Everybody loves it. So we're probably doing that. I'm not exaggerating. Four nights a week. Do you have an air fryer? Because I do something similar, but I just throw the frozen broccoli in an air fryer 20 minutes at 400. And oh my God, it's amazing. You know what? I need, so it's funny you say that. So uh, I was on the um, uh, the Cameron, you know, James Cameron and, you know, yeah. And, um, and Susie Cameron. Well, I was on their Christmas card list and they, you know, were sending these care packages like you would not believe. And I think it was three years ago, they sent me an air one of those air fryers, I've yet to use it. So should I, is it worth it? Yeah, well, do, do you know which one you have? Is it a big one like a Breville or is it a smaller one? Cause you have a big family. A round circle, it's like a round. Okay, I, I, I don't use that one as much. I do that for small jobs like roasting garlic, but I'm telling you, it, 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 
it's not that you maybe would save time doing it that way, but you yeah. wouldn't have to babysit it like you would in the skillet. And, and it's, it's do the same thing. It, it's really fun air fryer. You'll get the same effect. And then, and, and, oh my God, crispy fries, try it really. Don't, don't let it sit on the shelf. It's, it, you might really enjoy it. But <laughs> let me circle back around. Cause I got, I got distracted with the sulforaphane and stuff. Let me circle back around to the, the question, which was, what are some of my favorite products? Um, I adore all of them. I might, I would, you know, the ones I use the most are the pizza crusts. Uh, these are the cleanest, most tasty pizza crusts I think on the market, and they're available at PlantStrongFoods.com. It also comes with a with an engine to approve sauce back kit. So it's really you got your sauce and your crust, and then you just customize it with what you have on hand for the veggies. Um, the uh, the Rips Big Bowl cereal. Obviously, I have six six mornings a week. I used to love the raviolis and the burritos, but those have been discontinued. So I'm, I'm not having those anymore. We don't have the pasta sauce. That's gone. Um, we have the microwavable popcorn that we're going to be reintroducing that doesn't have any added oil or any added salt. So that's, that's really nice and clean. Um, a lot of, a lot of yeah. people are asking about the hummus. Would you be bringing that back? You know, the hummus, no, the hummus is not going to be, we're not going to be bringing that back. It has to be refrigerated and you can't ship that way. And we don't differentiate enough from a lot of the other hummuses that are on the shelf right now. And when we first went in at Whole Foods, we were the only oil-free, no tahini free, or tahini, oil-free, tahini-free hummus on the market that I knew of. And so we really differentiated, but now there's two or three others. Whole Foods is now bringing in local brands that are doing the same thing. Um, so we just there's not enough of a white space there for us. I see. That and makes sense. Yeah. And hummus is not that hard to make people. It really is. And you open up a can of garbanzo beans, you put in some lemon, some garlic, boom. You're boom. Done. You say hummus or hummus? I say hummus. Huh. Is, <laughs> it, how, is it hummus? I thought I have a, I, I thought have a friend I, from the, the, the. I thought you were from like Lebanon or something. Yeah, hummus. I have a friend that says hummus, but she's, she is from there. So Kathy says, can you order your products on Amazon? Amazon, not yet. We're, first, first, we're only doing it through our own Shopify e-commerce site, right? And we'll be, but we'll be um, going into Amazon later this year. But right now, right now, um, it just doesn't make sense. We'd be cannibalizing our our own um, our own kind of Shopify site. Nice. Lori says, are you fully recovered from your injury? And someone else is saying, so now what do you do for exercise every day? Cause you are still exercising like a maniac while you were here healing from surgery. Yeah. Uh, no, I am, I'd say I'm 90% recovered. I still, there's still some echoes in the right ankle. Um, but I'm, I'm doing everything right now except running. Right. So I'm mountain biking. I am, uh, I'm playing Frisbee golf. I'm swimming. I'm playing tennis. Because my kid, we, I live in this community where we got tennis courts. And so, uh, and here in Austin, the nights are just pristine, like 60 degrees. So we go, we turn the lights on on this community tennis court and we're playing tennis. The five of us, it is, <laughs> it is a blast. Have you ever tried pickleball? That's my favorite activity. Yeah. So once, and I know it's a smaller court, it's like a wiffle ball uh, different rackets. And I love it because, I mean, I love what I see when I see people playing it because people are in their 60s, 70s, 80s. You don't have to move as much. And yet you get all the fun of, um, of the game of tennis. It looks great. It's really, it's very popular here where I live in the desert. Here, so Freya says, I've been vegan for five years, was 240 pounds and now 185. I get tripped up on the argument of high fat keto. I've tried vegan keto and high carb, low fat. My body is stubborn. Often I eat very low fat and low carb to see the scale move. Any advice? Um, <clears throat> so that was kind of a long question. Can you like paraphrase for me? What exactly well, is she- it, it, I guess she's saying that she's, my body is stubborn. I often eat very low fat and low carb. I don't know how you could do both um, to see the scale move any advice. She gets tripped up on the argument of high fat keto. She's tried vegan keto and high carb, low fat. Well, I, I would just tell her that, you know, keto, I don't, I just don't know a, a world where keto really makes sense, especially long-term. I mean, it's a starvation diet. As Dr. Clapper likes to say, it is a um, physiologic parlor trick 
where you're basically tricking your body into burning these ketones going into the fat burning. And, uh, and it was meant, you know, back in the day when we couldn't find food uh, and um, <laughs> uh, it literally is, is not, it was, it's not meant for long-term. It's not healthy. Uh, you know, I don't know how shoving down, you know, chicken, beef, full fat, lard, butter, you know, yogurts, dairy uh, is going to be good for anybody's system long term. So I would go uh, with the low fat, high carbohydrate, but make sure it's unprocessed carbohydrate, uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, not processed. And you'll hit a home run and, 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 and be patient with it. And, you know, AJ has got, a, I think, a whole book on it. But, you know, the, cal- the principles of calorie density, and once you master those, you should be able to ma- master your, your weight destiny. And I've got a chapter, it's chapter four in my seven-day rescue program, all about uh, calorie density from Barbara Rolls and Jeff Novick and really the masters that uh, have taught both you, you and I. Yeah, I love Barbara Rolls. I just interviewed her for the summit. She's amazing. And you're right. I do have a book about it. And it was uh, endorsed by Chef AJ's Food is fun, filling and fantastic as she is. The first time I ate dinner in her house, I had seven of her desserts. It's a good thing I live in Austin and not LA. (laughs) (laughs) You think that's funny? Listen to Joel Furman uh, uh, wrote. He wrote, Chef AJ makes unique and deliciously nutritarian recipes. I have eaten her food and lived. (laughs) you guys have a sense of humor are you do you buy your broccoli sprouts or do you grow them yourself because i'm i'm wondering if i've ever seen them in the store no i no i i i bought i bought bought the mason jars i bought the little seeds it took like four days and it doesn't require really much of anything you just put it in some water flip it over water it once or twice a day and next thing you know you got the broccoli sprouts I got to watch. I, maybe when Doug's on, he'll do a demo and maybe really make it so simple that we'll have to do that. Oh, he I, will. He, he will. But, but make sure that when you interview him, he's in his lab. Okay. I'm going to write a note for that because I, 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 you know, we learned sprouting in culinary school. That's like 20 years ago. And when you don't do something, you kind of forget. So I, I want to start eating more sprouts. So that sounds amazing. Now, yeah. Char- yeah. Charlene says, will you bring back your veggie burgers? I'm guessing no, because it sounds like you're not doing any refrigerated products right now. Well, so that was a Darlene, you said? Uh, Charlene. Charlene, Charlene, Charlene. You know what? So that, those were some of my favorite products, especially the Pinto Habanero burger. It's got the heat in it. Um, those, we actually have gone to a new supplier partner, a new manufacturer. We've got everything teed up and ready to go. The problem is, and I would love to hear from, from you, and maybe we'll take a poll, is that in order to ship it, these are frozen products. So they have to be shipped with dry ice in the styrofoam containers or another container with a certain liner and the shipping costs are almost $25. So you could be buying you know, a dozen of these for 24 bucks, but the price would be close to 50 because of the shipping costs. And so it's like, are people willing to pay that? I don't know. And so, you know, in order for us to make that happen, we have to place a minimum order of like 20,000 pounds. And so, you know, it's a song and a dance that we have to do to determine, is there enough demand for those burgers and are, and are people willing to pay those shipping costs? Yeah, I know what you mean. Deborah says, can you please tell Rip how much I adore his mother? I love her cooking show and just find her adorable. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, Come- well, thank you. I um. I feel like every day that I get to speak to Anne and, and, um, and feel her light and her energy uh, and her love uh, is just another day that I realize how lucky I am to have her as my mother. She is, she's special. She's unique. There's, there's no one like Anne. She, and she's hilarious too. I mean, she is so fun. She really is. <laughs> she, she, she's never lost that, 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 that no. spirit no. of play. No, she she has a youthfulness about her that has never uh, waned. Yeah. So Connie says, so it seems that you eat nuts and your dad says no nuts if you have heart disease. 
but won't it help to prevent heart disease? I don't know if not eating nuts prevents heart disease. Well, I, I think that uh, it all depends upon, like, I think what we all have in common is that whether it's Dr. Greger, whether it's Dr. Furman, uh, is that the maximum amount of nuts that you should have in a day is one small handful, right? So it's about uh, an ounce or two. And I think we all can agree, if you are snacking on nuts all day long, you got pistachios, you got cashews, you got all roasted almonds, you got peanuts, that's, that's not gonna do you any, any favors. Now, my father, he's a stickler because most people don't know moderation. And so I think that if people could just do one small handful of walnuts a day, he'd be fine with that. But he finds that it's easier if he draws a really, you know, a bright line in the sand to let people know we're not going there. We're not going there whatsoever. Now, he does allow some, you know, ground flaxseed meal and, 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 and different seeds like that. But with the nuts, I think it's just too easy to overdo it. And, you know, as you know, Chef AJ, they're about 2,800 calories a, a pound. So they're calorie dense. And uh, if we're trying to lose weight, reverse disease, for some people, it's just easier, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of people are saying they'd pay for the burger shipping, and they want you to bring back the chili and crackers that they miss them, Jane so, says. So the, so the chilies, the chili is coming back. So it's coming back under the Plant Strong name. It'll be called the Engine 2 Firehouse Chili. Um, I, uh, I wish I had a rendition. I could show you what it's going to look like. It's gorgeous. Um, but we're also going to have um, a... Thai carrot chickpea stew, and we're going to have a lentil, uh, an Indian lentil stew, and we're going to have a white bean creamy chili. Woo! That sounds <laughs> great. And, and so, when when is the when is the kickoff date for all these products? August, August, and they'll be exclusive in Whole Foods for three months, and then we're allowed to go outside. So you should come back when you actually have them and just show them all or, you know, at, or, or, or maybe cook something with it. Like, because I think, you know, showing is even better than just telling. So that would be great. And uh, I'm assuming we'll still probably have somewhat of a pandemic then. So I'll keep doing this show. This show is a fun question. Mm -hmm. yeah, show don't tell. That's yeah. right. Ra Randy has a fun question. So she says of all your family has a lot of recipes Anne and Jane and you lots of books. What is your all-time favorite of all of them? Uh, I'm going to say two. I know what one of them is. I'm writing it down just so you. you. You write it down. All right. And then I want you to turn it around so it, only you can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. One is the raise the roof, sweep the <laughs> table. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Yeah. And then the other, the other, the other is just going to be the um, brown rice and black beans extravaganza, right? Just that simple beans and rice with the veggie relish on top. Oh my gosh. I could eat that every dinner and never get tired of it. So how old are your kids now? I know you have three, two girls yeah. and a boy. Yeah. Yeah. So my youngest, her name is hope and she is a wild thing like nobody's business uh, and, um, yeah, hope, hope is six. And then I have Sophie who's 11 and Sophie is just, she is, um, like almost like too good to be true. <laughs> she's so just, ah, uh, beautiful. Um, she's very girly and, um, doesn't cause any trouble and, uh, just love her to death. And then I have a son Cole who's 13 and is a just a sports fanatic uh, has these crazy this crazy bouffant of blonde curly hair and everyone that meets him goes oh my god I would die for your hair it is it's it's nutty uh, and uh, and Cole's just a guy's guy it, is Cole spelled K O L E K O L E man if you could just change that O to an A <laughs> I know I know it's so funny Lance Armstrong texted me about a week ago and said, do you still uh, sell those kale shirts? And I said, yeah, why? He said, cause I want to, I want to send one to my buddy. Here's his uh, address. I said, okay, I'll take care of it. And then his name was kale. 
I said, is that his real name? He said, yes. So there are people out there whose names are Kale. Yeah, I had I had a friend in, in about 25 years ago when she did. So her son must be about that was his name before Kale was was so popular. I know it's crazy, but we do have Kale shirts. I mean, uh, and those, yeah, those we, you know, we were the first ones to introduce the Kale t-shirt into Whole Foods under the Engine 2 brand in 2010. And literally like since then, Target sells kale t-shirts. Beyonce came out with her own kale t-shirt. Um, it's hard to trademark that. <laughs> that is neat. Are you still selling the shirts? Oh yeah. 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 Cause so, I love the, I love my blue one. The long, it's, I love it cause it's long sleeves. Yeah. If anybody's interested, you just go, you go to, we're doing it. We're doing it with a partner called plantathletic.com. You go to plant athletic and then you can find the kale, the kale t-shirts. Uh, plant-based princess says just ordered pizza shells and rips big bowl original can't wait oh That's nice but i'm so guessing much. is it just in the united states though because i'm I, we have people watching from even the netherlands so i'm imagining it's just in the united states right now for shipping yeah let me you know what let me see if i can get um i mean let me get disc uh, discount codes for people let me that might be fun uh that'd be really fun <laughs> yeah discount code for um, e-commerce. Hurry. <laughs> That's okay. And then I have a question about legumes in your kids. Yes. Yes. Are all your kids plant-based? I'm guessing that they would oh, be come on. Yeah, they, I know. They, they are, they love being plant strong kids. They wear it, uh, with a huge badge of honor. Um, they, they feel no deprivation whatsoever. Um, and they're not perfect, meaning, you know, they'll do the, the plant-based, you know, coconut ice creams. They'll do some of the um, plant-based crackers. Uh, my son Cole loves the Beyond Meat Burgers, right? And I'm not telling him he can't have that. Um, my, my daughters like putting the diet cheese on the pizza when they, so we all make our own half of the pizza and they put a little bit of diet shreds on there. Um, so I'm, 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 you know, my kids don't have to eat the way I do, but they are 100% plant-based. And, and they're, they're developing that palate that really loves green leafies and loves legumes. They love, like my wife, the reason she made that lentil oat loaf last night, and then she makes all kinds of extra little lentil oat loaf burgers, and we freeze those, is because our kids gobble them up. They're incredible. Um, and, uh, but yeah, their variety, their palate is, um, it's great. It's yeah. great. That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll come on the show. I'd love to meet them. I mean, that, you know, I what? Bet- good, luck. good luck with that one. My, 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 my wife is very private with all that stuff. And if anybody's noticed on my Instagram or anywhere, um, um, no kids, no kids. Okay. Anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe one day I'll get to see what they look like just <laughs> privately because that hair sounds amazing. Yeah. So Ma says, my son is allergic to legumes, peanuts and lentils that we know for sure. And so I want to transition the whole family to plant-based diet. Do you recommend just trying different legumes in small amounts? Because she says it seemed to be a huge part of eating this way. Any modifications you would suggest he's 11 years old. Mm. So, uh, yeah, no, if there's, a, did you say he had allergies to them? Legumes, yes, yeah, legumes. Like legumes, yeah. Um, you know, I wonder what Dr. Will B would say on that one. I'm wondering if it's something where, you know, you started really small and worked up to it. You could build up, um, kind of build your system up to it would be my guess. I would just start really, I mean, legumes are such a wonderful part of a plant-based diet. But if you can't have them, uh, don't be, discouraged. I mean, there's so many different amazing potatoes that are out there and whole intact grains that you can explore. Like last night, uh, no, the night before last night, we had a great farro, a great farro dish. And we, I'm really, the kids are loving pearl barley now. Um, and what else, you know, brown rice, quinoa, those are basically the four that we're doing now. So this might be a tough question. I've done, you're my 406th show since the pandemic began. While I uh, uh, appreciate all of my guests, there's a couple of shows that just really, I don't want to say favor, but you know, there's how a couple just kind of stand out as being memorable. And I'm wondering if you have found that with your podcast as well. Absolutely. 
<laughs> yeah, there's there's somewhere you just I mean, the energy's there, the flow is there, the chemistry is there, um, the information that is coming out of their mouth is just so profound and awesome. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I'm trying to, are you going to ask me like to name some? Well, no, just I was going to say, because, you know, people are asking where to find the podcast and guys, everything is already in the show notes. What show notes are is you just look underneath the YouTube video. If you don't see it, refresh your screen. You can't see show notes on, on Facebook. So if somebody was starting out, like my, like if somebody was saying to me, I want to listen to Dr. Doug Lyle's podcast, Beat Your Genes. He's got close to 300 episodes. I would say, listen to 161 first, because that's my favorite. So where would somebody start in your podcast? Uh, I would start, um, well, it's broken up into seasons, but I would start at season one. I think season one is absolutely brilliant. And then from there, I would just look through season two and season three and see, uh, I would really love to hear, you know, what Christy Funk has to say about breast cancer or, uh, what the Shur's eyes have to say about, you know, neuro and sleep deprivation. Um, and, and, and the title pretty much gives you a really good indication of what the show is about. Um, but you know, you know how it is. You've done 400. I've done, you know, a quarter of what you've done, but um, it's funny how at some point they kind of all blur together. And if somebody was to ask me to, you know, tell me about this interview, I'd be like, Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. All right. you know? Just the one I remember the most is just um, I, I interviewed the wife of Jack Lane, uh, Elaine Lane, and I just you know that just always sticks out in my mind. It's just because she was so you know like your mom, just so precious. She's ninety seven. She lifts weights. Every, you know she's not a hundred percent plant based, but I mean ninety seven lifting weights every day. It's pretty cool. That is really cool. How do you? How, I mean, I'm impressed. I mean, how are you getting all these guests? Are you, uh, do you, do you, do you Most of them contact me, uh, to be honest, and that's why I'm, it's such a backlog to get on. Because that's you know, when when I first started the show, I said, "Does anybody want to be on the show?" And I, I'm not kidding. I got like 300 people writing me, and, it, and so finally now we're opening up spaces in June. But there's people that I've been trying to get, like Michael Moss, who I finally got him to answer, and it, it might be a maybe. And he's like the one person that I would just love to interview because I just love his work so much. Is there anybody that you've been trying to get that just has said no to you? Well, I tried, I tried getting Michael Moss yeah. <laughs> and it's he, funny because he came to plant stock in person. Yeah. Right. Um, and um, yeah, but like, like right now I'm trying to get Bill Nye. Right. Uh, you know that I got John Stewart, you know, you know, John that's Stewart. That's fantastic. Yeah. Great. And that's because his wife came to one of our seven day, uh, immersion programs. And we we started a relationship there and uh, she is so passionate about all things plant-based and John is so great. Um, I'm trying to think I've got, some, uh, you know, who I I'm trying to get right now and I'm actually having a surprisingly hard time is um, Zach Bush. Yeah. He's very hard to get like they'll answer and then they won't. You're right. He's really, really hard to get. Have you had him? I have not. I've tried because I, I really wanted him for the GI Health Summit, but his people just don't seem to respond. And I, it took me years to get Barbara Rolls to say yes, because she's just because she's sort of an introvert and doesn't yeah. really do a lot of interviews. Right, right, right. Well, good for you. I mean, yeah, I mean, for all your listeners, it's so I just want to say that, you know, uh, I have seen how far Chef AJ has come on this journey. And you've always been so supportive of me. Like when I, you know, kind of wrote engine two and, and I was kind of breaking out and all of a sudden I was the, you know, the hottest thing on the, the plant-based scene. And it's amazing how you realize, you know, you got your time in the sun and then there's a new, you know, a new, like, it's, it's amazing to see like Dr. Will Bolshewitz now shining and fiber fuel and everything he's talking about. Yeah. But you're still the hottest one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you got you know Doug Evans and the Sprout Book, and you got the Sure's Eyes that came along with right, you know, the the Alzheimer Solution. But Chef AJ, you have just plugged the plugged along, plugged along. You've got such an amazing following, and your information is so sound, and your personality is so you know just vibrant and passionate and fun. And you, again, you, everything that you have is because you've worked so hard for it, and you deserve it. And it's so great for me to see what you've done and you have your own house now and, you know, you got this great YouTube channel. It's spectacular. Oh, well, thank you. That is so kind. A lot of people are concurring. Rip is very hot. Rip is very hot. Yes. <laughs> that's, 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 funny. Very, that's very nice of everybody. It's funny. Like I'm, I'm going to be 58 in two weeks and you, you know, 
it's like, where did the time go? Where did the time go? I can't believe I'm almost 60 years old. I know it's, oh God, 60 was a tough one. Yeah. Let me tell you. And, and some mornings I'll, I'll look in the mirror and I'll go, you're doing good for him. And then some, some mornings I'll look in the mirror and I'll go, oh God, you look weathered and you know, <laughs> you're showing your age kid. Yeah. When you were a single firefighter where, where women were after you, the way they, I mean, you're married now, so they can't really go after you, but was it the same or, or is it because just in the plant-based world, you really stand out? You know, um, we, uh, I typically, I've never been a big dater. And so I, I, I usually dated women for two to three years at a time. And then, you know, at the three year mark, it's like, okay, are we getting married or not? And usually it was, okay, we're not. Until I found, you know, Jill back in 2002, and then we got married in 2006. So I didn't get, you know, I didn't get married until I was almost 44 years old. I waited a long time. And some, of, some people are like, oh, you're going to be a bachelor your whole life. And I was like, no, I'm just waiting for the right woman. Nice. nice. Well, Karen says it's your personality that's hot. And a lot of people are saying you look like your dad, which your dad is really good looking too. Uh, so I just got, I just got something from my team saying that, we, we don't currently have a discount for the, uh, the food that, that expired or whatever, but we do have, we do have an online meal planner. Um, and there's a, if they want the two week free trial, the code word is start fresh, start fresh. And when you get the products up and running, just come back. And then if you have something like a coupon for just one day, you know, we oh, can yeah. do that, but otherwise we still oh. want to see everything, you know? Oh yeah. We'll knock it out of the park. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice. It has been so fun catching up with you. Let's not make it three years again. So. Well, now, will you come on my podcast? I would it'd be an honor. I mean, I couldn't get to LA, but if you can do it remotely, we have Zoom oh. and yeah, be, and I have a microphone like you and not, not maybe not as nice headphones, but I got the pop filter. So I think it'll sound really good. Oh yeah. No, you sound amazing. So oh, thank you. All right. So we'll plan on, I'll plan on getting you in March. Okay. Oh, that'll be so fun. Thanks so much for if it's, and, and get me your brothers. Cause we've had, you know, it's not fair. We have two Esselstons that have not been on the show. You got it. You got it. So I would, we'll, we'll talk offline. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, Rip. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Let's see who my guest is tomorrow that you can come back for. Oh my God. It's my sister-in-law. She's my husband's sister and she's a vegan baker and her name is Elaine Shrewsbury and she's going to be making compliant date bars. So that'll be fun. Thanks again, Rip. It was great catching you. Anytime.